So I was mentioning a little bit about, you know, this healthy attitudes, you know, healthy relationships, the mirroring of what to expect as an adult when you're growing up as a child and how this affects your sexual proclivities, you know, and your self-esteem, your boundaries, your your persona right and as a child when I was nine years old an Australian family actually moved into the house across the street from me in New Zealand a nine-year-old girl and a six-year-old boy and one day playing at their home the little boy with his little stiffy and the girl you know whisper whisper under a sheet acted out a sex act in front of me now it was missionary <laughs> but you know it was sort of concern yeah. anyway so you think you know what's sort of normal growing up are they just um, children that were educated about sex by their parents or are they just mirroring what they've seen and you know we've got a father and a mara, mother and you know they're learning about a nuclear family and what goes on here's the parents we're the children this is what parents do this is what men and women do or want this is you know this is they're seeing this as normal as their idea of a relationship or whatever right I can't explain this very well but I hope you understand what I mean you know is this just how things always were and it was natural and um, at least you know and, and did they grow out of it you know or did they continue I mean what's worrisome is this boy is six years old okay so that's worrisome and then you can think well did they learn this actually because of what the parents or a parent was doing to them you know so that is concerning but in and of itself it's possibly just something normal and natural that you know children they understand about relationships between a man and a woman simply from living in a family we didn't all have these sprawling mansions right you know when people are living in little caves or huts and then little cottages <laughs> throughout human history right so um, everything was up close and personal and maybe you know this is how it was then you know it's the 70s right so <sighs> abuse or normal and and would you consider it incest and did it continue and then it then it becomes something again you know and was the nine-year-old girl um, somehow predatory um, I mean the boy was enjoying it and he seemed aware and it was all very relaxed and he was quite yeah, I ca Ugh. you know, I can't quite explain the situation or how, but it was very brief and it was over and I don't, nothing like that ever happened again, right? But, you know, and they obviously felt unashamed and unembarrassed to show another child. Maybe they thought it was normal. It was just like I thought everyone went to church to speak to God every Sunday. I had been indoctrinated and maybe they're indoctrinated into just that something in the same way right so think about that and now apply it to summer moon Utah Wells's life she's got her three brothers the nine 11 and 13 now I think and she's growing up in a household where everyone is living on top of one another they're in the same bedroom they forget all the squalor and everything um, they've got parents that are drug abusers not just users drug abusers uh, and they take drugs while they're supposed to be parenting and you've got the father that has really dodgy background and has failed when it comes to not being a sexual predator because he is one he's a child abuser uh, by his own admission uh, to the interview room and you've got on the mother's side you've got sexual predators on her side 
and both of these parents grew up uh, with this discombobulating life of broken homes and missing sisters and sexual abuse and jealousy and um, manipulation and they're not exactly going to be mirroring to their offspring healthy relationships and you know what are these children learning what are the Wells children learning growing up with Candace and Don and in that situation and so you know and and Candace you might say in an interview nothing's going to happen not when I'm around well when you're passed out from drugs and alcohol when you're actually blacked out even if you're in the bed you're not there you are checked out you're gone you're not there you're not home so you're not there you're not protecting her okay and all sleeping in bed together a sexual predator and God knows what else and what are they saying? Let's just say nothing is happening directly to Summer by the parents. So how, how is she being protected though? Is she being protected from these boys, these older boys? When we're not having this nine-year-old girl and a six-year-old boy. We've got these older boys with this little girl. And what's been mirrored to them? And what's, what, what values? And, and, and what are they learning? And what are they curious about? And what are they experiencing? And what are they attempting um, are they exploring their sexuality just on their own or what right and you know who is summer in danger from in her household just her father do you really think how can this be so because let's just say my friend was in a healthy household and that's what happens this knowledge this sort of trying out this something or other this this may be innocent exploration I don't know I don't know if they were abused and if that's why they explored like that I, I don't have any way of knowing uh, I can see both sides of that coin right I can't make a judgment on it I don't know enough but I feel like I can ask the questions about who was Summer Wells in danger from we do have this statement um, that one of the boys said something to an adult. Was it to was it to Ali or to Sherry or to Lynn, uh, Leslie, um, saying that one of his brothers did something to him, was touching him, right? And he's not too young. Those boys are not too young to touch anyone inappropriately and to assert some sort of authority and to act out and to want to get gratification by, whether it's malicious, whether it's sexual, whether it's just for power, whether it's just because he's doing what he's learned right. We know Donald Wells Jr. has committed this type of abuse and we know the attitude of Don Wells toward it. So who's protecting Summer from possibly the brothers, from the father, from her grandmother? We don't know. We don't know what the situation is because this family dynamic, this family is not like normal families, okay? Everyone's different in their own way and you need to allow for all the different flavors right but there are lines and we know that I mean this is Virginia and Andrews flowers in the attic isn't it this is just this type of American Gothic sickness I, I don't I, that we're seeing more and more it's quite uh, it's terrifying actually what could really be uncovered. Um, so yeah, who was protecting Summer and from whom?